Hey everybody, happy Thankful Thursday. Thank you so much for tuning in to our interview for this week. Our featured goddess is my friend Jen. Mm. I said it once because this is our second take, but I'll say it again. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad we're spending time together and I'm so glad that we're doing this interview um, because I can't wait for Jen to share some of her just deeply authentic and heartfelt wisdom with all of you, which she so beautifully and elegantly shares in your mm -hmm. soul to sisterhood story. You're welcome. Um, Jen is one of our 38 featured goddesses in the 36 stories. And um, in preparation for our interview today, I was thinking about the first day that we met. And it was just the two of us in a big room and we had an hour just to kind of talk. And you shared your story with me. And thinking back on that today, as I was thinking about how I wanted to open this interview, I remember that 60 odd minutes, it was like I was weeping, I was laughing, I was touched to some of the deepest parts of my core as a woman and as a mother and as a sister. And I was captivated by not only your strength and empowerment, but your grace. Thank you very I, much. And you've maintained that level of strength, empowerment, and dignity and grace throughout every interaction that we've had. And we've spent quite a bit of time together and I'm just so honored to have you in my life and to have you in this book, so thank you. I feel exactly the same way. That day was very special. It wasn't what we expected it to be, but it was exactly what it was supposed to be. I know, it was so funny too, because here Jen comes in and I was like so excited to meet her. And for some reason that day at work, I'd worn none of my crystals or none of like, you know, my, my funky stuff. I was very, very casual. And even at that time I had, my hair was all purple and back, mm -hmm. but I had it pulled up in a really tight bun. And I remember, you know, sitting there thinking like, man, I don't even have any of my cool stuff on for her to recognize, you know, the like, mother the rides broomstick, that kind of right. subtext. But I remember you looking at me and being like, I see you with your herbal tea and your mason jar. That's Do you remember right. saying yes. that? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. some very clear things that we can look for that we can yeah. identify that. <laughs> I think you just, we both felt it at that moment that there was a sisterhood established yeah. and we didn't have to work at yeah. it. I, I think what really comes to mind for me in that is that no matter what, um, we have similarities with everyone we meet. And if yeah. we concentrate on the similarities instead of the differences, we'll see them. And Absolutely. No matter, without your purple hair or your funky crystals, like we could still get to that place. <laughs> right. That space. Speaking of tea. Huh? <laughs> Speaking of a little tea. Yeah. Well, in your story, your, I think it's your first sentence. You say, I am a mother of three daughters and they are my angels. Yeah. What does that mean? Um, that is it's a statement that I've made quite a few times now over the last um, 20 years. And it's hard to believe that I'm a mother. 20 years now mm -hmm. um but each one of my daughters was sent to me in a very specific way for a very specific reason and um each one of them holds that space for me uh, my oldest daughter kaylee um became that um catalyst for me leaving a very toxic relationship and i always had known that um through that she was an angel to me and that um avery with her struggles that she was born with immediately early on um, and which led into her sensory processing diagnosis and um, gave me purpose and meaning and fulfillment and a connection to a part of life that I did not know I was missing. And then Fela gifted me with that knowing of that mom's intuition and that connection to mother's intuition that I will never again deny or um, try and subdue and not listen to. Wow, it's really special, those three girls. <laughs> they are so special. And it's a great reminder too to us mamas that our children offer us just so much. innumerable gifts, Absolutely. right? And opportunities um, for learning and thinking back to those early times, you know, of when you were younger and your eldest was young, um, you talk about there were a lot of moments back in those early days, even before she was born, that were really challenging for you. Would you mind to share about some of those? And that's before Avely? Oh, before your Avely. oldest. Before Kay. Mm -hmm. um, 
So before Kaylee was born, um, I had a drug and alcohol problem um, that had been unaddressed and I was in a very toxic relationship. And um, I used, I found very quickly that through drugs and alcohol, I could uh, dampen my sensitivity and that um, my sensitivity level, that was a good timing on that. My sensitivity level was um, maybe a little bit higher than other people that I knew or that I was spending time around. And I felt everything from the world around me on a really deep visceral level and um, didn't have the tools to know how to navigate that or um, that that was even okay and what that meant or what to do with it and through drugs and alcohol I was able to quiet that mm -hmm. and um, be more normal. Right, and feel that fit in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think every one of us longs for that um, in one way or another and through the drugs and alcohol I did experience that fitting in feeling but I lost my um, connection to me completely. I had to sever that um, spiritual connection um, internally or dampen it really severely in order to uh, maintain the drugs and alcohol. And um, I did that for many number of years. Well, Jim, thank you so much for being courageous and vulnerable enough to, to talk about this kind of thing. Absolutely. That's, your courage has inspired another sacred place suggestion where um, in the book, readers literally can create a conversation with their inner courage. Um, and that's inspired completely by you. So thank you. I appreciate you looking at it that way and you sharing um, that insight about it because um, our society isn't one to look at those sort of admissions as that being an act of courage. Mm -hmm. So hearing that that way is really beautiful and really empowering. And um, it leads me into one of the things you had talked about with me is that um, statement that I made. And that's as far as liking me, who I am today, yeah. and that I like, I appreciate my past, and I'm not ashamed of it at all. All of the things that I went through, all of the years, made me who I am today, and I can honestly say that I like me today. <laughs> Gosh, Jen, I mean, just that too. It's that elegance, that grace of not feeling like you have to hide any of who you were to be who you are. Yeah. I mean, what a gift that you can offer all of us because I think so often, just like you said, because of the pressures of society or, you know, family of origin or the world we live in or books that we read, we feel like we have to dim certain aspects of our light because maybe they wouldn't be as highly regarded as other things. But it's just like you said, every, every step has made you who you are today. And you wouldn't change her. I would not change her. Not one little bit. Not one little bit. I am proud of who I am today. <laughs> and that's taken a lot of years to get there. And so all of the pain, all of the, the things that I went through, I know that it was completely for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. And I be honestly believe in sharing our story authentically, um, like I'm so willing to do, is how we help others. It's how mm -hmm. we heal ourselves and it's how we help others. And it's really important for us. It's one of the things we can give. And uh, it's empowering. It's beautiful. <laughs> the, yeah, the sort of pricelessness of yeah. authenticity. Um, and you even say in your story that you stepping into a space unapologetically of being who you are has literally created the space for your daughters to step into who they are really meant to be. Yeah. No apologies, no filters, no, you know, no, no pressure, but just literally holding space and allowing them to become what that, what that has to feel like as a mom. It's incredible. It yeah. really is. You know, my oldest daughter was 10 when I, nine when I got clean and so almost 10 and um, I did not um, hold that space for her those first years and feel that moving from there forward could see this shift and this transformation there. And then with my next two daughters, being able to allow that from the very beginning has been really amazing to see. Okay. At times it's a little, um, I don't wanna say scary, but it's not how you see um, parents raising their kids always. It's not what I was raised like. And so it can feel uncomfortable at times, even though it's the way I want to be and I want my kids can be. There's times I even question, go, you know, but I'm so grateful that they can be who they are. 100% authentically. 
cheers to not moving <laughs> in the mold. Yeah, amen. Amen. It's been my amen. whole life. <laughs> Well, when it comes to that gap of nine years from when your oldest was born to when your middle child, your second oldest was born, um, you say that, you know, there were a lot of breaking your own rules to get to that point. <laughs> Can you share one of those with us? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, it's in your story, you share that you had some hard and fast rules when you met your husband oh. today, that no more, no more kids. And then you got clean and, you know, I'll let yeah, you tell the story. I was thinking prior to getting clean. Yes. But the rule prior to, to me getting clean had been like, even when I met Rob and we had got to, opted to get, chosen to get married, that we would not have any more children. Kaylee would be it. That was our one and only. And he was happy with that. And that was the way I wanted it to be and then um, I got clean uh, from drugs and alcohol and it wasn't very long after that that I had this longing and I had this tugging and I had this pulling that um, I wanted to have another baby and I went to him and approached him about that and it was the easiest conversation you could have ever had I barely had the sentence out and he knew where I was headed and I wasn't even clear when I prefaced what I was getting ready to say I hadn't even gotten to the question and he knew where I was headed and it was a yes. <laughs> and then very shortly thereafter, um, we were fortunate enough to get pregnant with Avery. Yeah. And um, once again, my world was getting ready to get rocked in one of the most beautiful ways. Um, I remember some real authentic conversations with you that I had about uh, Avery and her role um, in my life early on and you being able to really change the wording that I was using to um, make me be able to see her role more clearly. Oh, wow, um, thank you. Absolutely. It's, it, I think I find it very interesting. This happens to me frequently. The things we say to people that we don't know what sticks with them and what stays with them, and it can be years later, and we've had many conversations since then. Mm -hmm. But I used to say that um, more along the lines of Avery pushing, knowing every button and knowing how to push it. And I don't feel that way today. And Avery was able to really um, show me some areas that I needed healing from mm. and allow that growth and that space and that healing to happen. And that was a gift from you <laughs> that I got to see that differently and that perspective changed for me. Thank um, you for telling me that. Yes. I really appreciate Absolutely. you sharing that with me. Absolutely. <laughs> well, of your three angels, you say Avery is the one who really firmly rooted you in your divine purpose. Absolutely. So you've kind of shared a little bit about the different diagnoses that you and your family have um, been experiencing, but can you talk a little bit about the pregnancy and then how that led into about the first, what would you say, 24 months, 18 months of her life? Um, well, my first four years. First four yeah, years, yeah, okay. Yeah, the really tough ones. Um, so I was advanced maternal age, as they, they call us, when you get pregnant over 35, yeah, which is such a lovely term. Geriatric it? pregnancy, <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so initially, you know, they immediately start scaring me with some extra testing and some extra things that they're ruling out, and um, I had kind of that high fear there, and then at 27 weeks, I had preterm labor, and I was hospitalized, and um, a nurse had made an error even when I was hospitalized, and I had an adverse reaction to what they were using to try and stop um, the contractions, um, and I had a a realization that even in America today, in Western medicine, that you could die um, during pregnancy, which I had naively not ever thought about. Um, we live in a country that's supposed to have a really amazing medical system. So with having Kaylee being t uh, 10 at that time, and then um, her really needing me, and me being her everything, and then having that happen during that pregnancy, it was a really high stress um, on me, thinking mm -hmm. that something could happen to me during this pregnancy and Kaylee would lose me. Um, and then also the fear that I was gonna lose this baby. And um, I took on this um, blame, this level of blame that it was karma, that for the years of the things that I had done and the places I had gone and the drugs I had used and all of the behaviors that go along with addiction, that this was the universe's way of this karma come back 
I am through that now. I do not believe that to be true <laughs> at all. Um, but I had taken that on at one period of time for sure. So I had pregnancy. You can see how we as women or just we as humans could make those types of connections and those deep, dark, scary moments, right? I mean, Absolutely. we talked about this a lot in Divine Mommy University that we as women, we are such natural overachievers that even when it comes to finding a way to point the finger or attribute blame. Yeah, it goes right here. It goes right here. Absolutely. We always try to fault find with ourselves first. And so Absolutely. it makes perfect sense why. Yeah. I think between that and um, I have a very strong religious upbringing mm -hmm. and there always being that um, kind of shame and blame that's mm -hmm. tied in with that, that it very quickly had, that if there were negative behaviors or these behaviors that I had done that I, I was not proud of, there had to be a all opposite um, to counter them that had happened, this punishment. That's the word that was punishment. popping to my mind too, that internal, to, internal punisher. Absolutely. So. Well, uh, the pregnancy ended up beautifully. Beautifully. Absolutely, I have my sweet Ailey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and for everybody who hears the happy voices and the, you know, the scooters going back and forth, so we've got two eight-year-olds and a 10-year-old hanging out here with us yeah. today. And we got to give them props because they're doing great. They haven't, I mean, they could be coming in here if they Any wanted minute to. they could pop in. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll still give them props. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> for sure. But, you know, through Ailey's experience, um, when she was born, I had a high stress pregnancy and then a C-section birth and she was born with severe uh, reflux projectile vomiting and the first three years were very, very difficult. So the, the projectile vomiting lasted the first couple months. We were able to find um, formula that sat better with her and then um, she still had severe reflux and GI issues and upset and pooped a minimum of like 10 times a day the first three years of her life. Um, and tied in with all of that was emotional, behavioral, and developmental delays um, that really came along with that. That I had hoped that when we got the GI system regulated and figured out what was going on, as we were at all children's and GI specialists trying to figure that piece out, that all the rest of it would fall in place. Um, but even once we got um, her GI system more regulated and we realized through eliminating gluten and dairy that she did a lot better. Um, her emotional dysregulation was something like I had never seen from a child before. Um, and parenting her was some of the toughest years that I've ever had. You talk about that, just being pushed to the outer limits of your capacities Absolutely. as a mom, as a woman, as a human. As a human. Absolutely. Beyond what do you think you're capable of handling, but still having this tiny human that needs more from you mm -hmm. and I had this conversation with a mom in my office recently and she said I couldn't have articulated it more perfectly mm -hmm. that you are giving absolutely everything that you have to give and more than you ever thought possible to give and it's not enough yeah and that is a really tough challenging draining space to be um, and can feel very alienating at mm -hmm. the same time which I had gone through through the addiction yeah. <laughs> stuff, and I was very grateful to be sober, stayed uh, clean from drugs, but also sober from alcohol, even through all of that, and could see very clearly that um, its place in my life at that time could have been very dangerous, mm -hmm. um, and that I was grateful that I could see my role in Avely's needs from a very clear-headed space mm -hmm. and not resort to that as a coping me mechanism, but it was very hard, very tough years, wow. for sure. And how did that lead you into this life path that, I mean, if somebody had told you even 10, 12 years ago that you'd be doing what you're doing now, would you have believed them? I would not have believed them. Right. No, especially, no, 10, 12 years ago. No way. No how. Um, but I, so my, my path has gone through um, Avely's experience to working with families with special needs kids. And um, in the thick of it, when I um, had gotten to the place where Avely was um, more regulated and her daily life was easier for her, I definitely felt this longing and this calling immediately before I knew what it was going to look like and what it meant to work with special needs families and to work with special needs kids. And um, I started, I had a parent support group and um, even though I never, I, I didn't completely own that this was a legitimate statement, 
um, when people ask me, I was a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. um, what I did, I would say I, I worked with special needs families. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to step into owning that, that I didn't have a degree and I didn't, it wasn't getting paid for it. Um, but it wasn't my job necessarily, but it was a truth. And I was working with special needs families. Mm -hmm. And through that, and kind of that, um, putting that intention out there and continuing to do that work, it led to, I found a pediatric neurofunctional chiropractor for Abley um, here in Sarasota, it was Dr. Matt Morris. And it was the final piece to her puzzle as far as um, what was able to get her to the place where she navigates the world in a completely typical way with no, almost no struggles um, where she we don't have the big concerns about whether she was ever going to be able to live on her own um, and have regular relationships and what that was going to look like for her she is a-okay today in all of those spaces those worries that as a mom um, can really weigh heavy on your Just heart grip you, um, right? absolutely a mom or any parent um, even the, the dads any parent you know, that grips you. Um, but I found him and we started care with him and she had transformative results and I was in those support groups. I led one of my own and I was at therapy offices where I was in the waiting rooms every day with other moms and other families and when you sit the moms we connect and we talk and you find out what are you doing that's worked, what have you done that hasn't worked mm -hmm. and I started telling these moms and uh, he got busier his phone started ringing more and more and he asked me to join his team there and it really manifested into that um space where i can meet and work with families on a daily basis that share a similar path mm. that the walks our walk and that i can hear them and see them from a place of my heart <laughs> um and my heart hurts for them and um, but can, can support them and love them and show them what we've done, that we, what we've had success with, and then have their child also go through that same journey and that same path and see the results that happens for their families over and over again. Uh, it's been so life-changing for me. You know, I don't have a college experience and a career that I had, had passion about that I felt like it was going to be my calling. And so to have Ailey have birthed that for me is just gorgeous. <laughs> well, it's also gorgeous that you allowed that birthing process. Yeah. I mean, yes, you birthed your child, but you are also a co-creator in this, you know, uh, degree of heart-centered love yeah. and empowerment and wisdom. Thank you. That in my mind, <laughs> A heck of a lot more valuable than than a paper you can hang on the wall yeah and i mean i have to tell you i know jen i know the families not all of them because i know she's touched thousands but i know the families that she works with and that dr matt works with and that you have touched and supported and held and really healed and you know listening to you tell your story that day several years ago when we first met and then having you retell your story to me for the book, you know, it's just so clear that um, the space is here for you to step in, right, to this calling that, I mean, you couldn't turn it off if you tried. <laughs> I agree with you there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, um, I want to definitely want to touch on your youngest because okay. I know she has a huge part to play in this story mm -hmm. as one of your three angels, but some really clear wisdom that kind of piggybacks on what we've been talking about with your experience parenting with your experience professionally now working with these families is there's a natural inclination to want to isolate. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that. Talk about the dangers of isolation and how to step out of that. And I think it crosses a lot of lines. It's, you know, yes, parents have been very difficult, challenging struggles with their own kids and addiction, um, but just humans by nature, uh, even without any of those other really obvious catalysts for it. I think as humans, we get into tough places and struggles and we retreat and we go within and we think um any number of things you know can be for myself um no that no one's going to understand this that no one's going to accept me um through this that they're going to think something's wrong with me um whether when the addiction part of it um and then with the, the children um i definitely felt like none of my friends had gone through anything like it so that therefore they couldn't understand or possibly help me with it um and 
was grateful for my experience with addiction and with the programs that I had got been through to teach me to find the ones who can. Mm -hmm. So reach out and there is somebody who can relate and find those and that you're never alone and that there's always someone that can see and hear and be there for you and hold that space for you. But we have to be willing to reach out. You even say so beautifully in your story, you said, you know, you don't have to be strong. You already are strong, but you can't ever let that stop you from reaching out to ask for help. And it's just like you so beautifully said, if you don't think people in your circle are going to be able to find the ones that can. And, you know, Jen, I can think about the day that we did your interview because we sat in the car. (sighs) in the car in the front seat and did your interview while I was holding my phone recording it and I remember us just having this moment together of you repeating you are never alone you are never alone no matter how much it feels like that no matter how much your mind may be trying to convince you of that no matter what you've done you are never mm-hmm. alone yeah. yeah there's so much truth in that for sure and in that statement that we talked about that that you are never alone um the strength that you have within you can get you to the space where you reach out for help um and in doing so you gift someone else and that was another thing that we had talked about that day and that is something that i've learned through my work in addiction with recovery uh, in my own recovery and with other addicts and also uh, with these parents when someone reaches out for help you give me a gift. You give me a gift of healing, uh, allowing me to be there and share that space. Uh, a gift of reminding me for the addiction piece of it, where I was and where I never want to be again. Mm-hmm. And a gift of the progress I've made. Many times we don't give ourselves um, the space to honor the changes that we've made, the growth that we've had and where we're at now. I know myself, I can speak for me. I always feel like there's more to do. <laughs> so I don't honor that space. But when you speak to another person, another struggling addict, and you're reminded very quickly of where you've come from, where I've come from, the work that I've done, where I am today, and a grounding in of owning that in a way is a beautiful gift. And then that we can share our experience, strength, and hope, which is all that I have at the end of the day. It's really all we can do. And that experience, strength, and hope each one of us has that inside of us and when you share that um, the gift that's received is just so beautiful it really is so that's kind of a shift in perspective you know um i think we don't ask for help for lots of great reasons that jen's already identified but just remember that when you do you're you're not taking something you're actually giving something Let's try it right now. I'm going to ask you for some help. Okay. And then you get to ask me if you want to. (laughs) So I'm thinking about like what I need help with right now. And I could use some help, just support around finishing the book. Maybe if if you wouldn't mind to reach out in the next couple of weeks, just a text message, maybe every other day or a couple of times a week in the morning to just ask me how I'm doing. I'd really appreciate that. Absolutely. I would love to do that. Thank you. And I'm going to bring this into this conversation. The first thing that comes to mind, and this is the point of the things that I express, I would assume that you are too busy for those kind of, you know, like yeah. it's sometimes we don't reach out to check on people because we think they're so busy in their own stuff when really they could use that hand and that reaching out. And I would be honored to do that every couple of days. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> My request from you is that you continue to hold space for me as I um, work to stand in my truth and my authenticity of what that looks like for me going forward. Always. Um, Namaste. And I love it that our three goddesses are witnessing this very (laughs) special moment. Come on in, ladies. Come on in. So it's for these little ones. It's for them that we do this, right? Absolutely. All of these ones, not just these three, yours too. All of yours. Yep. Yep. (laughs) All of our futures. I ate all the babies. We're still recording. We're still recording, but that's okay. So as we step forward, I'm just going to put it all out there to each one of you to step into that space of authenticity and ask for help. 
Absolutely. Because there's going to be somebody out there that A, can help you and that will really very um, openly benefit. receive yeah. and value that. And they gift. will benefit from it. Big time, big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will sort of finish up our, our, our benefit here. I know I saw it rain. So the last thing I want to touch on is this is another part of your story that was so inspiring. I made it one of your three themes, honoring yourself, your sensitivity, and your sobriety. So as a final parting gift, Jen, tell us what that means for you today. Um, as, as far as honoring yourself, your, self, your sensitivity, and your sobriety, um, what does that look like? <laughs> Oh, in so many ways. Um, my sobriety, I honor by um, the choices I make <laughs> on a, a daily basis of um, my space and who I allow into my space and what I allow into my space, I should say, and really um, putting my sobriety first um, in all aspects, in all areas of my life. Um, I believe my sobriety and my clean time have gifted me with everything that I've received from there, which I'm squeezing two of <laughs> right now. Um, honoring my sobriety, my truth, and what was the third one that you said? Sensitivity. Sensitivity. Oh, oh, my sensitivity. I wanted to believe that I was damaged and that something was wrong with me for how sensitive I was and to the world around me and for the frequency at which my sensitivities leak out my eyes. Um, and I am not ashamed anymore of my tears and of my connection with my emotions and um, the, the way that they are expressed in my life on a daily basis. Um, and my truth, I believe that sharing my truth with others um, is a way of making everything that I've been through um, have so much meaning and I will continue to do so. It's a way of showing others that they're not alone, that message of, and if we don't share our truths in that way, it's hard to know that we're not alone. Um, I love how authentic so you two are being. It's so cute. It is, and I get derailed. <laughs> I think that was it. Oh, Jen, doing. thank you so much for, for doing this video, for, for trusting me and believing oh. in me and being part of this book. It means so much to me. Um, <laughs> I guess um, our final thing, all of us can namaste. So I will say as a final, before the final, final thing, um, go for more interviews, uh, or if you'd like to watch Jen's interview again, um, please go to our Soul to Sisterhood website. That's www.soul-to-sisterhood.com and go to the interviews page and you can watch all the interviews that we've done so far, working our way through all 36 stories. There's also a great bio that Jen has written and you can contact her directly from that bio and that's under the goddesses tab just click on the goddesses tab and scroll down to the bios and you'll find jen's so Gina, all right thank you you're welcome so much. you're welcome love you love you too thank you thank you <laughs> all, all right we're ready to namaste right. let's namaste everyone say namaste konnichiwa konnichiwa <laughs> <laughs> and we love you. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Everyone have a blessed day. Ladies, thank you so much for being in this video, and we will see you soon, Soul to Sisterhood family.